T-minus six minutes and counting. Uh, Pilot Graby reporting the APUs are configured for startup. We've had a final go uh, from the weather people for the launch this morning, uh, both for the pad area, the shuttle landing area, if there should have to be a return, and the various contingency areas around the world. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The flight recorders are on. The flight recorders provide measurements of the shuttle system performance during the entire mission for playback after landing. Fifteen seconds away from the T-minus five minute point when we get a go for APUO's start. T-minus five minutes and counting and we have a go for APU start. The APUs provide auxiliary uh, power, hydraulic power, to move the aero surfaces and main engines for steering. The liquid oxygen fill and drain valve in the external tank has been closed and topping of that tank completed. And liquid oxygen drain back has been started. This means that uh, liquid oxygen is flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the system down slowly to minus 270 degrees below zero. And we've had a report back that APU's, APU start has been completed. T minus four minutes, 13 seconds and counting. The firing circuit for the solid rocket boosters ignition and range safety destruct systems have been armed. T minus four minutes and counting. The astronaut crew has closed the visors on their launch and entry helmets, and the final helium purge of the orbiter's main engines has started to ensure that there's no surplus hydrogen or oxygen in the area at the time of ignition. The ground launch sequencer has determined that the APU hydraulic pressure is now normal for launch and flight. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The shuttle now on internal power and the Elevon speed brake and rudder have been moved through a pattern to ensure they're capable of doing their jobs during the mission. The engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines in the orbit are now underway. T minus three minutes and counting. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes and 36 seconds. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds, and the caution and warning has been cleared and the gaseous oxygen vent arm presently being retracted. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The main engines have now been moved to the start position and the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories and all systems are verified normal for launch. T minus two minutes. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 45 seconds and counting. The computers will automatically verify the readiness of the main engines at the one minute point. T minus 90 seconds and counting. T minus one minute, 15 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure.
coming up on the one minute point. T minus one minute and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water system now armed. And the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices ensure that any hydrogen is ignited uh, prior to building up. T minus 45 seconds. Just seconds away from switching command of the countdown to the onboard computers. T minus 35 seconds. T minus 31 seconds and we're switching control. We have go for auto sequence start. And we have the sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds to launch. 20 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed bank in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10, have go for main engine start. T minus 6, we have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower.
crew advised negative return. Atlantis no longer capable of returning to launch site in the event of an abort. All systems and mission control give a go. Four minutes, 15 seconds. Velocity, 8,800 feet per second. Altitude, 54 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 143 nautical miles. Three engines still performing normally. Three good APUs and three good fuel cells. Crew given a go to press to main engine cutoff. of reaching a normal main engine cutoff should there be a single engine failure. Five minutes, velocity 10,600 feet per second, altitude 57 nautical miles, downrange distance 209 nautical miles. All systems on board the Atlantis continue to look good at this time. seconds, velocity 12,300 feet per second, altitude 58 nautical miles, downrange distance 269 nautical miles. Standing by for the call for single engine transatlantic uh, capability. Atlantis uh, forward velocity now enables it to reach a transatlantic abort if that would become necessary in the case of two engines out. All engines continuing to perform normally at this time. All systems on board Atlantis look good. Velocity 14,300 feet per second. Altitude 58 nautical miles. Downrange distance 340 nautical miles. Standing by for a single engine Presto Mico call. At that point, the Atlantis uh, capable of reaching normal main engine cutoff on only one engine. Guidance officer reports navigation is good. Velocity 16,300 feet per second, altitude 57 nautical miles. Given the call up for single engine press to main engine cutoff, capable of reaching main engine cutoff on single engine if that's necessary. Crew read up a change in the earlier call. Uh, after analysis of the data, the first stage performance uh, indicated low. That just affects uh, the uh, later trajectory. And the adjustments made. Uh, engines, three engines now throttling down. Throttling to maintain uh, three Gs. Velocity 21,800 feet per second. Altitude 57 nautical miles. Downrange distance 605. minutes 30 seconds velocity 25,000 feet per second standing by for main engine cutoff command main engine cutoff confirmed standing by for separation of the external tank altitude 60 nautical miles velocity 26,000 feet per second 